So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the homes for Ukraine whistleblower claiming that the UK refugee scheme is designed to fail. Now, this article is from the 23rd of uh, April, but it was on uh, just Wednesday, just gone, that they actually talked about this in the House of Commons. So I'm assuming this is still relevant. I did drop the ball and forget to cover this one. It's just one of those things where I just lost track. Um, but we're going to go back through it and make amends because this is some abhorrent, abhorrent stuff from the British government here. So a whistleblower working on Britain's home, Homes for Ukraine scheme has revealed that he and his colleagues don't know what they're doing and claims the scheme has been designed to fail in order to limit numbers entering the UK. So in the UK it keeps talking about the amount of visas offered and blah, blah, blah. Um, the reality is that what they do is they'll offer visas for almost all the family except one person, knowing that those uh, Ukrainians won't leave you know, one of their kids behind. Um, it's just absolutely wild that Pretty Patel and the Home Office would do this. Amid criticism over the numbers of Ukrainians so far allowed to come to the UK, the insider revealed that confusion, poor morale and a lack of guidance meant staff contracted to the scheme frequently resorted to making things up, uh, making up their response to cases. No training. Absolutely no training there. You know, this is not the government trying to spend, you know, save money by not training people properly. This is malice. In my opinion, this is outright malice. Staff working on the helpline for the scheme introduced after widespread fury over the UK's initial response to the uh, Ukrainian refugee crisis revealed they only received three hours of training with no follow-up help. You know, the complexities of getting a visa in the UK is high. You've got people who've just escaped a war zone. They're going to need a lot of help. And the people who are meant to help them only have three hours of training in a call centre that's extremely busy. And said any complaint or suggestion to improve the system was met with silence. This, this system, this company aren't built to do this job properly and the government's failed to actually do their role and actually help people from Ukraine. We don't really know what we're doing, said the source, who works for the private company responsible for processing the documentation of Ukrainian refugees. The system is designed, it would appear, for people to fail. They want to keep the numbers down, everything they do as, it, as if it is to do that. I've had a barrister and lawyers on the phone saying they couldn't understand the system. You know, this this uh, company is there to process people's uh, visa claims, their documentation. But at the end of the day, it's the, uh, the Home Office which gives a say on whether people can come here or not. The whistleblower questioned the official government data on Ukrainian refugees, claiming that the statistics gave the impression that ministers were being more generous than they were in reality, which doesn't surprise me. This government always gasses up what they do, full of lies. The source speaking on the condition anonymity said that he had dealt with numerous cases where the UK visas had been issued for an entire Ukrainian family apart from one child, which in effect stopped the entire family from travelling. I want to repeat that. There were cases, numerous cases, where where visas were offered to an entire Ukrainian family apart from one child. What reason would you have for refusing access, refusing a visa to that child or delaying it for that one child? doesn't make sense doesn't make sense this allows the government to say we've issued a lot of visas you know if you've got a family of say five people you say look we've issued visas of four but you know they didn't take them yeah because they have withheld one is a guarantee those ukrainians won't travel said the source because no one's going to leave their kid behind the whistleblower said he came across four or five cases each day in which a single child from a family had not received permission to travel, a pattern he believed was too much of a coincidence for him not to have been encouraged. And then, you know, the government argues for safeguarding, etc. But, you know, surely if these families are more than one kid, safeguarding isn't an issue because you have to deal with safeguarding for multiple children. It doesn't make sense. Latest government figures show that 40,000 UK visas have been issued under the Homes for Ukraine scheme since it was launched five weeks ago, yet just uh, 6,600 Uca- Ukrainians have actually arrived. This obviously numbers would be accurate at the time. One sponsor who'd offered a place in her home for a mother and daughter from um, Brad Danka, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, a small town north of Kiev, said that was devastated during the Russian invasion, told the observer the child had not received their visa after a month. And what reason does the British government have? You know, safeguarding is important. Absolutely important, because there are a lot of dodgy people who would happily take um, these Ukrainian women and children into their homes for bad purposes, right? Safeguarding is important. Getting them school places is important. But it took over a month to deal with this, really? Honestly? 
um, Katerina Lizenkova, who was also a volunteer helping Ukrainians come to the UK, um, said they had applied for a visa for the pair on the 21st of March. Although the mother received one quickly, the daughter had not and both had been stranded in Poland. Hours after the observer raised the issue with the government, the daughter received permission to travel. So obviously it's not down to safeguarding if they could you know, issue this visa within a few days of a news outlet asking the Home Office, what the hell? This is madness. On Saturday, British sponsors described um, being at their wit's end after a Ukrainian mother who was due to stay in their home received a visa, but the children, including a four-year-old daughter, were left waiting. And again, the government will argue safeguarding, you know, safeguarding is important. You have to run things like DBS checks, but it shouldn't take over a month to do these things. It's crazy. Uh, Listen, Kova said she was aware of 700 applications under the Home Office for the Ukraine scheme that had still not received response, many um, dating from when the scheme was launched. The whistleblower is employed by a Paris-based multinational called um, Teleperformance. Why is it outsourced to France? I thought we're meant to be Britain, you know, we're meant to keep jobs here. Don't make sense. Which also owns a consular service company, TSL Contact, the latter being heavily criticised for promoting paid services um, to Ukrainians applying for visas, but has not, you know, has not really helped them by the looks of things. The source who had been working for the scheme's hotline for a month said, "So far, I have had two phone calls from Ukrainian women in tears who say their experiences have left them feeling like that they won't be welcomed by the UK government because their applications are taking forever, and therefore they don't want to come here anymore. That's tough when you hear that. I can imagine so someone escaping a war zone." who've tried to get visas in the UK because we told them we're welcoming them welcoming welcoming them here they they feel like they're not welcome here anymore because we're taking forever to deal with their applications it's madness he claimed that calls from potential sponsors and applicants to the homes for ukraine scheme rarely appeared to be recorded so they never actually kept details of the calls i've taken one call since i've been here out of hundreds possibly thousands in which it said recording before the person came through the source said but it didn't actually record they said they used to work on the COVID lines where everything was recorded and it's important to record these things, to at least make notes for people's cases. The COVID lane was, line was far more structured and that wasn't even that good. You know, there were a fixed set of rules. It, you know, the, the COVID lines weren't great. You've got to imagine how bad the Ukraine ones are. Well, he said, teleperformance was not entirely to blame for the problems relating to the Ukraine scheme because the firm was essentially working to the specifications of the UK government. Where have we heard that before? The UK government specification being rubbish. You know, we've heard that with PPE and now we're hearing that with this. It's madness. When you go to a private company, you have to tell them exactly what you want. Otherwise, they will do the bare minimum. Teleperformance is the client. It's just fulfilling whatever it's been asked. But he said any complaints to the firm's management appeared to be ignored. They don't care. We get zero response, and if there is an attempt to tweak it or make it better, we are certainly not told about it. Communication non-existent. We've chose not the best company to do this. The result in sentiment among staff, the source said, was frustration. Colleagues have spoken to feel the same way. We're all feeling pretty exasperated, he said. And, you know, the simple fact is some of these jobs you take because you need a job, but some of these you take because you want to help people. And these are people, you know, helping others escape a war zone and get to safety, you know, get some security back in their lives. And the UK government not doing a good job. The scheme's helpline aims to add applicants, uh, guide applicants through the sponsor process and help them inputting data required for a successful outcome. However, the government has the final say on who gets a visa and who's allowed into the UK, the Home Office, because the rest of this stuff, as Yvette Cooper pointed out, it's all privatised. The last thing to privatise is the Home Office and Preet Patel because she's not done a good job. A government spokesperson said when combined with its Ukraine family scheme, a total of 71,800 uh, 71, visas have been granted, with 21,600 Ukrainians arriving. But the fact is, you know, they can grant 71,800. But, you know, if those go to families where you haven't approved one of the visas, that's where you run into the problems mentioned in the article. So by the looks of it, this scheme is designed to fail, especially when other European countries have been far more generous with what they've offered to uh, Ukrainian refugees. You had Ian Blackford basically begging Boris Johnson, telling him that we've got, you know, a load of kids ready to come to the UK um, to escape, you know, to, to get out of Poland, to actually have, you know, school places, etc., and, you know, be able to progress with their lives, and, you know, Boris Johnson saying, oh, we'll do everything we can to uh, help these children, you know, Ian Blackford, I think he said it took weeks for them to get this stuff sorted, because the Home Office is being so slow, and now we've got stories of the government saying they want to cut civil servants, really? Like, it's just madness, especially when we need them now more than ever. 
really, you know, with Brexit, with the um, Ukrainian war, with COVID, you'd think civil servants now would be in absolute demand because of the fact is we need them. We need their help. We need their expertise. You know, if you put in more civil servants and more experts on uh, visas and refugee schemes in the Home Office, maybe you could actually do your jobs properly. But then again, you're de- it's designed to fail, isn't it? So at this point, the government don't want to do anything because they don't care about refugees. But um, and they don't care about brown ones or white ones from what we can see. But, you know, they care a bit more about white ones um, based on the way they're treating people from um, the Middle East and Africa. But um, anyways, look, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.